will be punished by our race. New rules are built on the blood of the preceding era. All right, so we have pay right here, guys. I'm just going to forewarn you. I kind of got the sniffles a little bit, so I'm going to edit them out as best as I can. This is my second time recording this. I just talked for five minutes and realized I didn't hit the record button. But I'm going to try and remember everything I talked about. The first thing I want to do is compare this unit to Cerise because I think that's what a lot of people are clicking this video for. That's probably what I put in the thumbnail. That's probably what I put in the title. That's probably why you're watching this video. I'm not going to go in-depth on the unit. I want to talk about that first so people that clicked on that can... Go on about their way. If you want to hear my thoughts on the video you, on this unit, you can continue watching, right? This is a late game PvP unit, kind of like Ran. I don't think she's going to be great in PvE, really anywhere. Um, she might be okay. I mean, she's a, she's a buffer and a stripper. She might be able to be used somewhere, but Cerise is just going to be better in PvE because of dual attacks, right? Um, and Guiding Light is very useful as well. Um, I think most people that really need this unit in in their account right now that are doing late term rta probably already have cerise if you're newer you probably don't have cerise so i would highly recommend getting a cerise and getting a guiding light if you don't get a guiding light then i think you should probably get one from the powder shop for free um i will be buying another guiding light from the powder shop i don't think i'm going to be pulling for any because i kind of want to triple s this unit and i just pity the sermia for uh ml sermia imprint before i even seen that she was what, what she did. I just saw that ML Serbia was coming and I pulled on the banner. So, yeah. That's my thoughts on that. Um, she's definitely better in Cerise than P in PvP. She um, power crept her kind of in the same sense that Lilius, ML Lilius power crept her. Um, but she's got way more base speed and can go way faster. This unit, realistically in Legend, you're going to be seeing her at like 320 speed. Which is insane to think about. I'm not going to be going that fast, but I definitely will be able to pick her as a speed contestant against some of these Emperor players that I'm farming while I'm in Legend that try to cleave. I think she's going to be great anti-cleave. I think she's going to be great in cleave. And I actually think she's okay for the game. And I'll talk about why moving forward. I try not to be as negative anymore when it comes to stuff that comes out because being negative is just a waste of energy at this point. Smilegate's doing their thing. I might not agree with what they're doing, but I'm not going to let it bother me. I already get bothered enough by RNG and RTA. I don't need to get bothered by them releasing units. I didn't mean to hit that. So moving forward here, uh, she's a Virgo Thief. I don't think there's any Virgo Thiefs in the game right now. Um, I noticed they're on this trend of releasing new Zodiacs for archetypes, right? Um, another thing I mentioned before in my last recording, she really gives me Grimjow vibes. The blue claw here, the color... Uh, the mask up here kind of gives me like a Rancar vibes, right? She's just like really Bleach-esque to me. The white hair. I know Bleach didn't really have like, I don't know what they call these, Nekos or whatever. Um, you know, the, the cat tail and the, I don't know. Just wanted to say that. My, I actually played Neverwinter online and my character's name was Grimjow. I'm a like big fan of the character. So I thought it was like, she just kind of reminded me of him a little bit. So she's got effect in the center kit. 128 base speed. The rest of the stats kind of don't matter because uh, she's a an opener debuff unit all you want is speed and effectiveness really maybe some bulk the imprint here is why i'm considering triple s but i don't know we'll have to see um the release is okay as well too like if you're not looking if you don't need that effectiveness and you're um bringing her as anti-cleave right uh she has interesting an interesting ability to where she provides like mitigation for your team so she can provide extra mitigation here if you don't need the extra effectiveness which i think is worth mentioning as well so moving forward here into her skills we have her skill two: um punishing blade attacks all enemies with guardian spirits decreasing buff duration by one turn before restricting and making them unbuffable for two turns grants an extra turn to the caster um unbuffable is a very powerful debuff right we saw how powerful basar was for how long um and then they power crept basar with other units and then aol exists i don't think she's better than aol because aol doesn't attack so she doesn't get countered AOL can strip Violet, no problem. Strip Rylet, no problem. All those evasion units, there's no elemental disadvantage. This unit isn't going to be able to strip Violet at all. So Violet stocks go up into Cleave. I think Violet is a very important unit to have if you're going to do RTA right now because of Ran, because of Ida, and because of Nalpira. Um, they're all heavily countered by him. So he's just a good unit to have like in your arsenal, right? And I highly recommend putting him on immunity if he's not on immunity yet. He can't be stripped by these popular units that strip and he can't get bombed by Susaria. Uh, 
highly recommend having a violet available on immunity just for this if you're doing rta right well this is basically for for people doing rta at this point because this is the meta like this is what's in the game you could be stubborn and not build units you're just going to struggle um so if you have the unit i would recommend building it even if you're like anti-violet in my honest opinion i don't think you can complain about the game if you have answers to something and you just choose not to build them based on some dumb principle right i don't agree with that mentality at all uh so if you're like a waifu only player and you're getting shit stomped in rta that's your own damn fault if you have a violet sitting in your waiting room where you transmitted him because he's a boy right that shit's cringe you lost your right to complain but but like moving forward here um this is a really good ability restrict uh she like prevents aol from pushing up she prevents um Rimuru, well 50 50 chance preventing Rimuru from going up basically anything that boosts itself elena all those units that boost themselves um she can restrict them from doing so sage ball etc i also think his stocks go up as well um er sage ball is already a popular anti-cleave unit and i think he's pretty damn good into her and um he can also or she can she is also a pretty decent counter to politis as well she restricts before she actually uses her non-attack ability so politis won't push up and cut your team which is kind of why i think they designed her like this, this is another anti-politis right which i think makes her good as anti-cleave tech as well because some people are just cleaving with politis because they don't have any other option right they, they actually demonstrate the restrict here and here where they ravage so like and that's also good to note that like uh aol cleansed the restrict and the unbuffables there so she didn't proc skill null that's a very good thing to notice i didn't notice that before so she's actually a, kind of a pseudo AOL counter too. AOL still going to shit on her when AOL takes a turn. But um, you're removing the skill null from the team, right? This guy's against this draft. This guy's actually fucked. Well, not really because a Ravi goes. AOL just strips this team actually. So this isn't a great showcase. And then we have the skill three pack hunt. Using the power of this goblet increases attack of all allies except for hers. Um, I don't know why that's relevant for two turns before granting stealth escort and a barrier to the caster for three turns and escorts a new thing right barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's level i honestly think they did this because they're tired of people abusing units with high base speed at level 50 so they give you more incentive to make her level 60 right um, and this barrier is freaking massive by the way and then escort as target takes 30 percent of damage suffered by allies arius is only 20 percent so this is actually insane. It's a better Arius. Crazy, right? And then we can look at this here. She gave everyone attack buff. Um, that's the escort. It's actually crazy how much uh, that barrier is. She's got almost 20k health. And that's just under like half of her health. Well, it's about at, like a third, right? It's about a third notch right there. This is a huge ass barrier and it's three turn duration. This demonstration, it doesn't really show much because AOL is about to strip all of that shit. <laughs> and then Carmen's going to S3 and Charlotte is going to wreck this team. But yeah, so this isn't a great uh, example, right? Why would you push the Charlotte up? Oh, I guess this is arena. So, you know, skill doesn't matter because the unit's just going to do that and ruin everything anyways. Uh, that's why I think arena showcases are dog shit because literally in RTA, this is a losing draft, but in arena, it's a winning draft because this dumb unit hits her and pushes her up. I, I don't like arena. I think it's stupid. And then we have our S1 slashes the enemy with a sharp claw with sharp claws with a uh, 30% chance to stun for one turn. Soul burdens up to a hundred percent when she has a barrier effect chance is increased by 25. So wait a minute, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? She has an eight forty percent chance to stun on her S1. Dude, that's that's literally made, right? And then when she has a barrier, 65% chance to stun on her S1. And she's a thief, so you can run her in like dust devil and get two chances to stun. That's toxic, dude. Why? Like, <laughs> are you serious? Uh Bop. and a dual attack. Um, so let's take a look at our artifact real quick and we'll talk about her a little bit more. So 30% um, effectiveness 
After using non-attack skill, decreases skill cooldown by one turn. Can only be activated three times per battle. Hmm, they put a limit on it. I wonder why they did that. They don't want her getting infinite value, I guess. You know what I think? This artifact's actually good on Ruzid for Grass Expo. <laughs> That's like the first thing that comes to mind. Because like, I like Ruzid on, on RNL for Grass Expo, right? So he rotates his skills faster. This is just a guaranteed RNL, you know, every time he uses his S3. And then he could put this the uh, the attack down on the boss. I think attack down, on, it's either attack down or speed down on his S2, like more frequently, right? And then cycle more. Um, that's one thing that comes to mind. Uh, I think the artifact could be okay on her. Since she does use her skill three before using the non-attack ability, she will get benefit from this right away. And it does give her effectiveness. So she's got 18 in her skill kit, 27 from imprint, and she can get 30% here. So that's a lot of free effectiveness, right? It's what, like 70 around there? It's like a lot, right? It's huge. We like free stats here. Um, so I think it's an okay artifact. I don't know if there's any other unit that could really take advantage of this. Um, Non-attack skill thieves that I can think of are just like Ran. But I don't think Ran works because he uh, uses his skill to first. So he won't get benefit from this. Then there's um, Judith, right? She uses that first. Um, and it would only, like what she has a stun in her S2. I don't think it's that great there. Um, Ruzid, I, I mentioned that already. I think it's kind of okay. ML Selene does not need effectiveness at all. And um, she has a passive ability. So to getting value out of decrease doesn't really do anything. I think it's really only for her. And maybe a future unit, right? I can't think of any other thief. And I can't pull the game up right now to check. So who knows? Um, I think it's okay on her. There's a couple different options that you can use on her. Um, Silver Rain, not really needed because she gets, has her own built-in attack buff. Um, RNL, I don't think it's a good idea because you cycle out of her barrier too fast. You want to keep the barrier and the stealth and the escort up as long as possible. I'm trying to think of like what else. Those are like the two main things. And Alabastian maybe for effectiveness. Honestly, I think her artifact is the best one. Or, um, you know what, uh, the, the Winter's Sword one, the Ran one, that gives attack and steals souls. So I think if you're, you're going to use her in a situation where you're drafting her as, um, like, anti-cleave, right? They already, like, people are already banning Belion, correct? So they can get value out of their souls. If you can build a really fast um, Pyrrha here, on Rand's artifact, you can actually yoink their souls that way if you outspeed and get the big ass Arius. So you can draft an Arius user and her who is an Arius user and that also doubles down into a speed contest, which is really good. That's what makes um, ML Lilius really good as anti cleave tech as well. I don't know if I mentioned this in my video. I'm, my initial thoughts, I'm just like more in awe by like, you know, all new unit that I don't really think. That's why like. I have more thoughts on Sermia too. So I'll probably do a second video follow up on that. But like I've actually sat down and thought about her and talked about her before making this video. So I have more shit to say, right? Um, I feel like I should do that more often. But as I was saying, like the reason Emily Lilius is good anti-cleave tech is because she's fast and she provides bulk and she provides like a tack down for, your, for the enemy team, right? So she, not only can she outspeed and disable, but she also provides your team bulkiness in case you know that's not enough. Which is really good. She does the same thing, essentially. Unbuffable is a really powerful debuff. Restrict is a really powerful debuff. So, like, um, I can go ahead and say this now. I think Flan is dead. The reason Flan was so popular right now is because um, people would fall back on Flan and use impr imprints to, to contest with the speed because they would just assume Ran got banned in cleave scenarios, right? So people would ban Ran against known cleavers and they would just use Flan instead. But now... There's Ran and there's Pyrrha, uh, who are both easily going to outspeed Flan unless their speed gear is cracked. And I'm talking about light level, uh, mega wieners. Some of these like legend cleavers are the only people that, are, that can really use like potato balls. All those guys can use Flan to a great degree of success, but I fight like a lot of people. Their Flan's only like, like 290 and I easily outspeed them by drafting one speed in Brent and banning theirs, right? And I'm not a cleaver. I can go over 300 on a couple units now because they're releasing these units with high base speeds. And um, the reason why I think it's healthy for the game that this unit gets released, yes, she's going to be used in cleave. People don't like Politus. Politus just gets picked in cleave. 
But, you know, this is really restricting on, like... Like, the unit pool's getting bigger, right? Them drafting Ran and her really... Like, it, it instantly makes Violet a force span, right? So that's something Fleavers have to consider when they're drafting now, right? So they have to consider Violet when they pick both of these. Um, I still think Ran is better than she is. But she's a second option, right? So... Violet cocks, com completely cocks both of them. He's a force ban. So you can draft, like, a pretty good defense team and then just last pick the Violet and he gets banned, right? Or pick him early and then they have to... And the reason I say last pick is because they can't pick counters to him, right? So you want to pick him late as possible. Cleavers to deal with Violet, they'll pick, like, s They'll pick Millum. Some of them will even pick Zahak and Violet just dies. But if you last pick him, he becomes a force ban because they didn't pick anything earlier to deal with him, right? Um, because if they take counters to Violet early then you can counterpick them afterwards. So that's why you want to save Violet for your last pick most of the time. Generally, when people are getting cleaved early, and this is a huge mistake people make, um, I don't make this mistake anymore, and that's why I've climbed up into the top 50. When people go to start cleaving them, they're just like, oh, shit, and then they pick Rim and Violet. And then a smart cleaver can deviate from his draft. He's not just going to pick what you want him to pick that you're trying to counter. He's going to counter you. He's going to pick things that kill your Violet, right? That's why you want to save those picks for last. Yeah, I think she's healthy just because she's a very good anti-cleave option and she's easy to get fast for people that don't have great speed gear. I'm more of a standard player. I can cleave if I need to. I can outdraft people and cleave. I'm in Legend right now with a climbing win rate. Like, it seems like every time I do a video, like, I'm an extra 10 games up on my win-loss ratio. So my, my win rate is going up. I would argue that, like, in Legend right now, I have, like, a... 65 maybe 70 percent win rate and it's just because i draft well uh when i'm actually trying hard you know sometimes i, I pick like a monkey and i just play when i want to play and i lose because of it but when i'm really thinking about my draft i can outdraft most people it's keeping me a legend like i'm steadily climbing in legend so i think she's healthy for she's healthy for my account so i guess i'll just pull up mine i'm already 20 minutes into this shit um i have rebels here this is the build i was looking at I don't pick AOL as much these days. Uh, I have her on very good gear right now. I think my AOL is like 272 speed with like 220 effectiveness. Honestly, I think I could slow my AOL down and put her on like Spirit's Breath because I think that's better these days because of ML Kerouac and, and stuff like that. Because a lot of people will pick ML Kerouac into your AOL. And it's better for you to go after ML Kerouac. Most of them are around 250. So I have some really good speed gear on her that I can take off and put on my para here. If you're not sure what this is, this is Fribble's Optimizer. So this is the build I was looking at. The gear quality is good. It's not like super crazy, right? Um, I mean, 78 gear scores, 75 gear scores, pretty good, right? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, 63 is pretty good. Or 69 is pretty good, right? But we're really just looking for speed, honestly. So this is 20 speed, 21 speed, 20 speed, 17 speed, 17 speed, and then boots, right? And then she's at 300 speed. This isn't like all over 20 gear. This might not be my final build. The fact that she uh, acts as an Arius holder, I think you want more HP on her. So like my HP here, as you can see, it's it's I'm not I don't I haven't incorporated an artifact in here yet, so it would be like a little over 11k. But um. I think she needs more than that. I actually rolled a 22 speed health neck today on crit set. I have a 22 speed ring on crit set as well. So I think my, my, my biggest issue though with running that is I don't have a very fast chest piece on speed set that she could use. I have one. And then my next one is like 16 speed. So I don't think I'll be able to use the ring. I think I have to stay on a speed set ring. But um, And then the same goes with weapons. Like my weapons and my chest pieces... Um, my fastest ones are not on speed set. So it's going to make her kind of awkward for me to build uh, efficiently. Um, I could drop the effectiveness and probably keep the speed. Uh, so that's what I'll probably try and do. Um, I just need to really just grind out more speed gear to build her better. But this is still good. I mean, I could probably run this and be fine. She gives herself that big ass barrier based on skill level. So if we notice in the video here... Satan that barrier she got, it scales based on her level. That's a big chunk of health, right? Um, she's got what, yeah, 19K health. It's about a 9K shield, right? 
and it's always going to be a nine it's going to be a 9k like the same amount no matter what your hp is so like my health bar would my barrier bar would probably just be like here instead of over here so she'd still have a good amount of health she still have like 20k health but she's in danger of just dying when she gets stripped so i think she's a good unit must pull for pvp um, I, I have the same thoughts on her that I had about Lilius. I think you want this unit if you're PvPing. Same thing with AOL. I think AOL is better than her, of course, because of neutral element and the fact that she doesn't attack. But AOL does not go this fast. And honestly, I think AOL needs to be slower at this point in tankier. Because people just, you know. I don't know. The meta's kind of shifting the anti-debuff. Or to, to not anti-debuff, but control. I think she's gonna this unit literally can fit in like almost any draft as well she can act as your knight she can literally act as your mitigation so you don't have to draft a knight with her so just consider that right you can draft like a knight and her or whatever you can just draft her as your only mitigation and then go super aggressive um she will change the meta up a bit not just for cleave I think she's good anti-cleave. I think she's good in standard. I think she's good in control. The fact that she is your mitigation and brings the the stuns and the, she, her recycling is going to be good. She brings attack buff. This is the only... Wait a minute. I didn't even consider this. Is there any other Arius holder that gives attack buff to your team? Like outside of like Charles. Charles does not count. He's not... Um, you know, I guess Charles could be a mitigation unit if you want. But he doesn't really support. He's like, he's got an offensive kit. So making him a tank is stupid just for attack buff. I don't, I don't really, none, none of them are coming to mind right now. Like any, any mitigation units that give your team attack buff. That alone makes her insane. That alone makes her really good. Uh, beware of this unit. Um, she's, she's going to be around. Okay. Uh, build your violet. I guess that's all I got to say. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This is a long as shit video because I really went in depth. I guess I'm just going to say, you know, Cerise versus Pyrrha. Who should you get? In-depth review. You know, talking a lot of stuff. Or whatever. Make sure you like the video. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. I appreciate that. Make sure you comment to help out with the algorithm. Check me out on Patreon. I do music stuff. I have a pretty big project in the works. Uh, I got a couple other songs I want to start working on. I got one that's pretty much done. I just got to add some voice lines to it and tweaks a few things. I got a lot of shit going on. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.